20 to August 27th, 6 o'clock, good for the next meeting? You got to be in October, John. I was in February actually. <laughs> Last, that's the 27th? Yes, yes sir. That's the 27th. I'd say this, is, uh, this room is available and open. All right. So we'll meet here the next time be August 27th at 6 o'clock. I think the purpose of this committee is to, is to get the two governing bodies and the sheriffs together right. to discuss these ongoing three issues we identified in the <coughs> And that is sheriff, law enforcement, jail, and outstanding uh, invoices and so forth. I, I summarized that. That's not in detail. But <laughs> to help us better understand the situation three more. and what has brought us to this position is, is the concern that city council expressed several years ago <coughs> regarding the city contribution for law enforcement, especially the sheriff's office. <coughs> and this is some of the things we thought that would help us to better understand our involvement with the sheriff's office. One of them is a list of all employees, title, salary listing, and more employees identified to comp board and were charged in the physical budget. We don't have a clear understanding of that. I think it would help us if we had that to better understand the situation. The second one is position allotment compare actual to comp board. Uh, as you know, the comp board you have three funding sources for the sheriff's office you have the comp board you have the county and the city and we would just like to know how the positions are allocated among the different uh the comp board has different well you have the jail and then you have law enforcement and then you have uh uh, uh courts security if i said that correctly and others that they might provide some they do not provide i don't think the comp board provides any funding for sros no. Uh, where I've worked, they did, and it's all been That's local. All Allegheny County. Uh, all Allegheny County. We have our insurance, but you have yours. Yes, sir, we do, and uh, so uh, that would help us to understand it. Uh, you know, the new staffing requests and approval process. Uh, one thing that I've discovered in talking to John is that the and city staff, the city doesn't have a clear understanding of how things are processed and approved for the sheriff's request and so forth. It would help us to understand, you know, because we talked about that we don't have a full understanding of the city. Uh, it doesn't have a full understanding of how things are presented uh, to the board and approved and so forth. So, you know, I think it would be good if we had, like, how our new staffing request and approval process conducted and so forth. Uh, another thing is to identify the process by which new positions are presented and approved. Uh, that's sort of a repeat of this third one. But how are salary changes processed and approved also? Uh, we have a process in the city that we do we don't understand the process of the county so it would help us to have a better understanding of how you proceed with that uh, if we could get the provide original approved budget and final budget for revenues and expenditures and then uh, fiscal year appropriations to budgets and approvals and we'd like to see if we could get this for a period of top five years if it's not too demanding if that's too demanding for y'all to compile the information we can live with three years we don't want to be a, a burden or cumbersome to y'all because I know collecting data is difficult and, and time consuming, but I think it would help us understand things as we move forward uh, uh, for, the, for the city. Those are some of the things that, that we have, and y'all might want some stuff from us. We're open to that. This has got to be an open, collaborative process. May I ask a question? So <clears throat> when we're talking about number four, just for my edification, I guess for the goal purpose, um, for four and five, um, are, is the goal to understand not only the sheriff's budget process, but the county's budget process? Mainly, uh, we should not be involved in the county's budget. We're no, more but it's just understanding the sheriff. how any amendments would occur yes. if there's changing or evolving needs with the sheriff's. Yeah, in the sheriff's, um, yes, ma'am. Department. Yes, ma Okay. We don't want to stick our nose into their budget. We got no, it's issues. just making sure, you know, <laughs> how those amendments evolve or yes, how the sheriff goes about handling that, correct? So we're I mainly, assume, man, so you have active contracts for something probably like maintenance or anything. Do you have active contracts for things like that or like medications? Yeah, we do. Our budget gets approved by the county. And they're kind of set fixed costs? Right. Okay. So those are some of the things. And I'm sure more things will be developed as we work together collaboratively to identify this and move forward. One of the key things we need to do, John showed me his file, historical file. Uh, this has been an ongoing issue that crops up about every five to 10 years. 
going back to what, 1950s? 56, yeah, before it started. Uh, and it keeps coming back. It would seem to me as an outsider now, to soon to be, that you'd want to solve this once and for all from both perspectives. And uh, I think that would uh, help us help you because otherwise you're not going to move forward. Things are too competitive now, and uh, there's some pressure on the count on the city I, that I, I'm aware of. I'm not don't know y'all's situation, but we have financial issues, and uh, and uh, we have to deal with that. Everybody does. Anybody says they don't have them mm. is ridiculous. But we have them. But we need to uh, to work on that. And this is one of the outcrops of this was the council was looking at, you know are we getting our fair share and are we paying what we should be paying for and that it's to the whole process of this of where we're at now <laughs> point of clarification do we want to tackle all these three issues at one time or do we want to break them out and do one at a time law enforcement funding and then jail and then reconciliation so, and it worries me that if we try to hit all three at one time we're going to get muddled i, I think we i think with the requests and and probably would be easier if everything was done at once for law enforcement mm -hmm. in jail and anything else that would come up as far as employees i don't Do you think want all all you want every employee I of think allegheny county, county even the county you no, sir. Just sheriffs. Just, just, just your people. Right. Your responsibility. Uh, sheriff, law enforcement. Law enforcement but we don't want to. Animal control. I don't think we need to separate uh, the law enforcement and the jail yet. Uh, but I agree with David. I think once we get to a point, we need to focus on law enforcement till we get that pretty much ironed out. Then switch over to the jail and get that ironed out. We don't need mm -hmm. to be mixing everything and that's yeah. probably what happened 35 years ago. They sat down and saw mm -hmm. these big things and. Figure we'll work on that later. And thirty-five years ago, you had a jail that was only <laughs> 10, 15 people. Yeah, mm -hmm. so actually, up until mm -hmm. two thousand, you had a jail that was only twenty-five. And then, as soon as it right. was built, it's full. It was fifty-six, right. and it was right. full. Yeah, change, change, change. Yeah, administration changes. Right. Right. Nope. The whole thing about getting into the weeds on something. The weeds are going to get pretty deep on this. There's mm -hmm. a lot of detail in it. It's going to be. Yes, it is. I've already right. learned a lot just since talking to John since we started. If this runs over into July of 2020, we're going to have budget problems. Right. So the December idea was let's get this done. But I don't know that that's realistic. It might be close if, if we get the information together. I know this is going to be hard to compile in a month. But whatever we can get and then we move forward from there. You get a certain allotment based yeah. on what fifteen hundred right. right. uh, per capita, one right. deputy for fifteen hundred. Right. That's all the comparable will provide. Right. And typically, where I've worked at before, you provide additional officers, and that's a hundred percent local government. Right. Right. And uh, so we would like to see in one uh, summary the comp board positions approved, and then the other ones are funded a hundred percent by the county and the city. Yeah. That's the only other source of funding. And I think everybody here realizes right. that the comp board doesn't come close to giving you what you need. No, the comp board positions, you know, something that I inherited that every other sheriff that inherited, that guy might be listed as a, a pay under the comp board as a, uh, a jailer, but he might be working on the road or whatever. Yeah. He just couldn't get these things. We tried to start getting them all straightened out, but they only allow you one for every 1500 for law enforcement. Right. And one thing that I have found out since we decided to to meet is a call was made to Governor Northam's office, his chief of staff, who uh, I was in Norfolk back in June uh, with the family going to a, a show, uh, the Lion King show, and a lady from Comport called me on the Monday, and uh, she's supposed to be looking at some things. And but the city of Covenant's population is it is not counted towards the number of law enforcement officers that we have in there in Allegheny County. That's something that was a surprise to me. The, the city's population is not counted because because you all get five ninety nine money. Right. So well, your population is not counted to yeah. the number of officers that we have for law enforcement. 
that was my big question because if we decide you're not going to do quite as much law enforcement, what's that going to end up hurting you by loss through the comp board? Because I, I would have, I would have assumed yeah. that they would use the city population. Just like when Clifton Fords, when Clifton Fords reverted to the town, then the sheriff's office obtained the three positions to count for the one for every 1500 so it's roughly two grade three i believe that they received when clifton reverted so the only way covenant's population would ever be counted is if covington either reverted reverted, reverted. i did not know that see that's so the kind that, of things we need to yeah, look that, that was something that really struck me because i always thought and I was under the impression that we well, you know, talked about it. You were getting, yeah. we thought you were getting four people for that. Yeah, I did, I really did. But uh, I mean, we're still, but we're, I guess that's the, we're providing a service, but we're not getting people. We don't have the people, but you're still getting credit for the reimbursement from the comp board for the number of people that we have for the service that we're providing. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff. It's it a lot is. of it's, Clay, it's, it's a lot of reserves. Uh, the city of Clifton Fort reverted to a town. And six months into that, we realized our biggest enemy in this whole thing was Richmond. Because they would look for every little, any way they could snooker you or take something away. or That's who we had ended up. The two governments agreed pretty well. But we had to keep around <laughs> Richmond to make sure they didn't come up with reasons. Yeah, to cut all, it's all based on population for law enforcement is based on the uh, number of uh, inmates for the jail, the, the number of papers that are served, it's all considered into the uh, workload data that they, every year, and then if your numbers are off a little bit, they'll, they'll give you a phone call, it's one, one sheriff's office ends up getting to be the, the one that'll do it, and they'll call you up and say, hey, you know, why is your, did your numbers increase? and transports and you have to be able to justify you know, you to justify because those numbers are actually uh the number of way like i say the number of jailers is based on the number of beds of the jail but then when you're overcrowded like we are then they'll end up you're you're they'll end up giving you emergency positions but if that population decreases decreases they take them away yeah they'll take them away from you or we lost a position one year because of the census in 2010 <coughs> our population went down in the county and we lost a, a law enforcement comp board reimbursed but they made that because the jail was overcrowded they funded that guy which is dave williams sitting right here now they so they funded him they funded that position under a emergency jailer because we had so many in the jail, so it's a complicated it is. It's situation. It really is. That's the weed I was talking about. Balancing. Because, and maybe people will see things different, but at the end of the day, uh, people should not come before politics and, and law enforcement and everything. We got to get this worked out. It's something that's been dragging probably over me for the last six or eight years you, you hear about it and then you don't hear about it so it's something that i i want to put to, put the rest myself and whatever we need to do to, to do that but we got to remember that whatever we do it affects everybody in this county which is the city of covington iron gate clifton forwards it affects everybody and what my intention would be through this is to come up with something that's fair something that's equitable uh, I know you represent the city and the county. I represent the people in the right. city. If they're paying more than they should, then that's not fair to them. If they're paying less than they should, that's not fair to you and the county. We need to figure out who owes what and pay it. And that's you know that's the way it should be. Um, you know we're going to run into some things where Covington may owe more money in one area but less money in another and even though it may balance out it still it needs the money needs to go where it belongs instead of trying to balance do a balancing act with jail and courts and law enforcement let's figure out who what money is supposed to be where and pay the right money it's i know the, i know the situation you're in you, you got money in one place you got to pay somebody somewhere else and it's hard to work all that out 
we need to get the money in the right place. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is one of the things we need to figure out is I agree with Tommy on the fact that if we owe it, we need to pay it. But we need to figure out what services we need, law enforcement wise, not paper served, not court services, since the figure that is in question is the law enforcement. Because apparently, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, <coughs> the requested figures on the jail, not the jail, the um, pretty much everything else that we pay, courts, papers, jail, we're paying what is requested, correct? Yes. Yeah, all, all the judicial. The, on, the only question is um, law enforcement and where you all made a budgetary cut last year, uh, $10,000 in the jail. Otherwise, all the judicial items, the, the 2000 series of funds that the technically state, all of those are paid for. Okay. Yes. Well, my thing is we need to figure out in this information gathering is what actually we need to pay for. I don't think there's enough to warrant as much as what we paid. I just don't. No offense. Oh, well, see, that's that's the thing. That's why I'm trying to figure out what's a mutual aid and what is what is an actual do you, service. Are you basing that on the number? You think the number of calls, or are you basing that on just? See, I don't know. That's the thing. You know, in my mind, I'm wondering <clears throat> with the amount of money we spend on a police department, what are we getting for that three hundred thousand or whatever that figure is? Yeah, roughly. Um, what are we getting for that? I think that's something we need to figure out also is, and, and if it's legitimate, I have no problem with that. But I mean, if we're going to be upfront and honest and look for information, I think that's another thing we need to look at is oh, yeah, what is actually good. being provided that I can go tell my constituents and people in the city when we have to raise taxes to help pay for that, that I can say, okay, Kevin has showed us that we're paying X, Y, and Z, and I can, I can stand behind that, but right now, since 2012, when I got on council and started asking this question, that answer has never been really provided. So are you but that just to summarize that, that are you looking for clarification of what's included in the sh what is titled sheriff law enforcement? Mm -hmm. What services the city is receiving? I think what you're asking is things like, and I brought this up before, you all, you don't did not have and still do not have emergency response team right which mm -hmm. is a basically known as SWAT yeah. that we've been you know this is way before me right that unit's 30 some years going now you <coughs> all, you do not have that if you don't provide that anytime there's a situation that requires that it's always the county SWAT team right. which people could be on most of the time those guys are on overtime mm -hmm. and then the county looks at me and says okay why should we pay the 100 percent when we're working the 26 percent in the city well you know what i'm saying i know exactly but but their line is another line yeah. of questioning if yeah. ert for example how much of that 262 or whatever the last yeah. figure was how many times are we get the ert team in the city, and is that two hundred sixty some thousand dollars worth? The RT is um, emergency response. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, one year I had the numbers as like twenty times in the city. Mm -hmm. you know. But that's the kind of information we uh, need to right. really substantiate what we're paying, and that's the information we've never drug gotten. search warrants. You know, but see, that's information we've never gotten, and although council has requested that through the years through various city managers, we've never From gotten. Um, I've requested through city managers since two thousand and twelve. And I know Mr. Tucker has. You talking about from the city to give it to you or from No, 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 no. Basically to get the information of what I'm talking about now. And information gathering if we're being given a bill for two hundred and once it was rounded off two hundred and sixty thousand, what is that going to? Okay, we did the ERT team twenty nobody's, times in a year. We no, yeah, nobody's ever asked us or me that I'm aware of for that information. Well, let's, let, let's get to that point now. Yeah. I mean, we've got a great opportunity here right. to make sure that a council and a sheriff and administrators in 20 years don't have to deal with this crap right. anymore. Right. And I, this is the time we need to get yeah. this done. And like I say, if the number is substantiated, I can, I can back that up. But it's hard for me to back up when we're just given a number and then we got to raise taxes to pay for that number and then somebody on the street one of my constituents says well why are you raising my taxes to pay for the sheriff's office we got the police department those are the questions we need to answer in this yeah. part of 
understand? Yeah, and that's what I told them. It's like the ERT team is an example. You all didn't have, and I didn't, I didn't, when, when we first started talking about this, I didn't want to do it this way because I felt like I was being asked, like, every time we would do something for you, it's like a kid, you know, like, well, I did this for you, Dad. What are you going to do? You know, <laughs> but I don't you're going to pay me, you're going to pay me. But I don't think that's a bad thing as far as record keeping to, yeah. because these days everything's questioning, and you know right. that as well as I do. Now that the, the numbers and the money, every yeah. time we do an appropriation, people are asking, why in the world are you doing that? And it's a whole lot easier. I'd much rather you do that and say, okay, we provided the drug dog 15 yeah, times right. a year, or we did the ERT team, yeah. or we did this, that, and the other. Makes it a whole lot easier to substantiate that that yeah. high of a price tag. But See, with I, the ERT team, you need to, to fix a cost to that ERT team. How much does that team cost you a year? Then a percentage of that would be ours yeah. because there's training, mm -hmm. there's equipment, there's well, things that they have to do. Right. Just showing up in Covington 20 times a year is not all there is to it. Right. They trained so many days, they, they bought so much equipment, they did so much other well, things that's associated with it. What you're explaining is the same thing we've gone through in the last three or four years. We did a we found out that we need better communication systems. Right. We borrowed a ton of money, put this system in, but once we explained to the taxpayers that's what we had to raise your taxes, but it's to cover law enforcement, we, EMT. Mm -hmm. oh, we, we discussed They're okay with it. We Once brought those things up. What they were getting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nobody ever asked for like the numbers, but that was the thing that the last previous city manager, when things started talking about this again, because it had, it had died down from four or five years ago. It came up, came, it came up, and it was like for six months, and then everybody forgot about it, and then it had been quiet. Came back up. It was like does that about every six or eight years. Right. And uh, then I told him, you know, that's one of the time when the PD was having the trouble that they was having, and there was that report out there. And we were doing, uh, also, we were providing a crime scene, which you all, I think, finally just mm -hmm. finally got a guy. Yeah. But we, we had two guys that were that were responding and and processing your crime scenes, you know, so things like that. And. Uh, but you probably have to document every call for at least six months to average it out to see what well, you sure is yeah. But the calls should be documented. I don't, I don't know well, why sure. you wouldn't have them documented. You know, it's just going back and finding all this information yeah. now. I mean, we, we have to actually look, and that's what we've been doing, is actually looking at the actual address and saying, okay, this is a city resident. Mm -hmm. They'll have to but is it just a city resident or involved. somebody that the city police arrested that ends up in jail? So there's a multiple, and that would be the same thing. Functions. Calls in the right in the nine one one system. I was I was saying. Since that seems to be a huge puzzle, right? With lots of moving parts because of just the lack of reporting capabilities, easy reporting capabilities. Would it be easier to try to start taking it off piece by piece, right? Like let's just look at counts, right? Like how many times was the emergency response utilized? You know, how many times um, to be assist with crime scene? And then start trying to then, you know, on the front end, right. just look at a big raw number like that and then start looking at that cost per service. Like just starting just to come up with how many times did we help versus trying to make you feel like you've got to come up with not only the yeah, times, yeah, yeah. the staff that came, what's their hourly rate, right. you know, how long were they at the scene or how long, you know, just let's just maybe start on how many times you came different things yeah. your team think, of that. our law enforcement numbers are the same as your law enforcement numbers probably you have the same number of people actually since I left the PD in 2008 your 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 numbers have increased yes your law enforcement numbers have increased by five or six positions <coughs> share what numbers are those are like crime no, I'm talking about staff. 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 Staff law enforcement people unless the comp board says we get positions the only other positions that we over the last 12 years other than the CIT which is a joint venture between all of us and the CSB mm -hmm. even though we're 
uh, the people we, we have th the three positions are under the sheriff's office it's under a grant that's the only like really grand right grant dollar. that's the only really new positions um, it was a uh, the only other one that comes to mind and it was part of the budget approval process uh, three or four years ago was an additional nurse right uh, exactly yeah. Yeah. sure and a new yeah. position like that would be requested through the supervisors approved as a position mm -hmm. by the supervisor. In the budget, right. Yeah. In the budget. In the budget process. That would help us understand. Because yeah. I've worked in other places where the county had funds and we would provide 100% funding for way beyond the comp board. Sometimes we fund them double. Now there are some positions through the county that are county pay positions. Yes, sir. Well, that one, that's the information right. that would help us to understand. Right. Okay. okay. We yeah, got to use word local. You got to start figuring you know, it's, it's not the county sheriff's department it's the community sheriff's so department. Uh, under that one you're talking about Kevin and typically right. you only hire somebody when there's a position vacant that's yeah that's the only way that we'll or, or when the comp board gives you the money for or the comp board says hey comp board you're due you know right you because your jail's overcrowded you're getting three more uh, emergency jailers we've had some of those those situations have happened with you know now we're up to about 140 you know 100 at our facility and about 40 off-site that we're paying for so that's happened a couple times with this jail <coughs> process. but as far as law enforcement the only way they would come to us in law enforcement is if our population yeah. went up yes sir about 1500 but when we're SRO, looking at this we went to the sro so these guys you know decided after a couple situations we had and we started to add it to sros in all of our schools last year and last year and y'all the county pays that county does so on this list, we're asking for not only law enforcement, but jail too. Are you, you're asking for jail, everybody. And you're asking for every we're position. Asking every position. Every position. This list. Then we'll separate it out. You want dispatch also? And all, you want dispatch? I don't, I don't think we need dispatch. I wouldn't either. think dispatch, nurses or cooks or anything. We pay 27% of them? Well, that's a good point. <laughs> It might just be nice do. to see the whole picture. Yeah, you probably. I mean, we should just, we'll just give you everybody. Everything. Everybody sure would be easy. Probably just easy. So we have a chart work, work thing. Organizational chart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the nursing <coughs> roster. The nursing should, you know, that's part of the yeah. jail. So right. I'm sure that's figured yeah. into that 26 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. percent. Yeah. Yeah. So when the comp board gives you emergency jailers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. what process do you fill those positions with? We have to. Do you have to? Yeah, do you have, have to come to board well, one, one year one year was right in the middle of the year <coughs> and we had to do a, an appropriation i'm pretty yes, sure yeah. that last year a couple years ago i think it happened they said hey you're due but that's the way it's handled yeah, through it's yeah. not you just don't go and hire somebody because you want to hire somebody oh no <laughs> we can't do that no 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 they, they have to appropriate yeah. the funds right. they have to yeah. come to the county and ask the board of supervisors to right. appropriate the funds in order for him to have it in his budget <coughs> he can fill the positions because we had emergency correction officers at Montgomery County and uh, no by the time I got to run up County they were already and it's usually at the county. beginning of like a budget year because yeah. all the comp board budgets yes sir. you know they they're also <coughs> like July 1st so that could be another part of the confusion because a lot of times money comes it's passed through money mm -hmm. it just comes to us yes, goes straight mm -hmm. to him but they send us the check because mm -hmm. yes, Allegheny County it, when in reality it's still <coughs> based partly on because I can't tell you anything about the billing process oh, you know I, I submit a budget and then after I was elected I submitted a budget to the city of Covington which I believe the first sheriff that ever yeah. did that I, I submitted that budget to, to you guys or whoever you prior your prior people and yeah. then, um, and then you know it's always been good the county approves it and then the city um, gets billed but how they get billed can't tell you don't understand it i think it's really not my my job but i understand we're all here and we need to get this squared away mm -hmm. i'm just curious most jail jail is supposed to be one staff for every three beds okay so once you go over three then they'll issue uh, approval or pass through yeah, We have a 56 bed facility and we have like 20, we have 20 at 56 beds. So they, they rounded it up to, you know, uh, I guess.
at 60 and when it gave us 20 positions and then we added over the last couple of years because of this overcrowding uh, when you get up into 100 140 mm -hmm. You, you double bunk basically, didn't you? We, yeah, we do, and then we have actually we're having to pay Western Virginia right. Regional. Yeah, Bobby thanks you for that. Yeah, I'm sure he does. I mean, I'm uh, thirty dollars a day, which is the best deal out there for about forty now. 